Well, hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Unlocked Show. I'm your host, Tracy Wilson, and it is an absolute pleasure to be here with you guys this morning. It is a beautiful day here on the Gold Coast of Australia, and I have got a bit of a treat for you guys all the way from Texas in the USA. My guest today is going to really help you guys to identify, you know, what is it that really successful entrepreneurs do that other unsuccessful or not as successful entrepreneurs tend to ignore. With his over 35 years of experience, he's been growing a really highly successful business. His own business, he's grown multiple other businesses. He's worked for the likes of PricewaterhouseCoopers, and he actually grew a software company and grew that from like a tiny wee company of just two employees all the way up to 400 employees and then was brought out by a company called Intuit Incorporated. He helps thousands of business owners all over the world now to help them gain time back. And I'm going to say, we had a little conversation beforehand. He helps them chase their wives. <laughs> It's really amazing resorts all over the world uh, because they have the time and the freedom and the means to do so. Now, he did not think I was going to say that, but absolutely have to. I think it's a whole lot of fun. He's also a speaker and author, and he's also been uh, been noted in John Maxwell's 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And if that doesn't tell you something, I don't know what is. You know, he's been recognized all over the world by people for the amazing things that he does and the way in which he goes about helping other entrepreneurs like you and I to really grow successful businesses. So that being said, welcome to the show, Tim Redman. It is fantastic to have you here. Oh, Tracy, this is great. I, uh, <laughs> You are you are contagious with your energy. <laughs> oh, thank you. Great. Well, I hope so. I'm you know, it is I'm seven a.m. <laughs> <laughs> for, for for most people, they know that we do a live. We usually do a live show, but today, you know, on the odd occasion, I'll do a recorded show for very special people just like you. So, guys, I need some matchsticks in my eyes. It's seven a.m. in the morning here in Australia, and. Um, yeah, it's uh, not typical for me to be doing a show at this hour of the morning. So let's um let's let's kind of get stuck into this because I think you are going to have some amazing things to share. I want to know, Tim. You know, going back, and I know you've been in business for a long time. You know, thirty five odd right. years is is given you a breadth of experience. What was it that made you sort of take a turn from? Working for other people, such as Price Waterhouse Coopers, creating your own, uh, you know, business in, in the technology sector, to then shifting and going down the path of actually coaching and mentoring others to run really successful businesses. How did that yeah, change great, happen? Great question. Yeah. So I I had in my mind, Tracy, a desire to uh, consult, a desire to grow businesses and a desire to actually even buy businesses to grow them. And so I'm doing all that now. Uh, even when I was working for other people, I had that vision in mind. And every, every uh, job I worked in a business, I always was involved in helping to build the organization. And, uh, and so I've, I've been just growing companies since I was 25 years old. And, um, so it's always been a desire and uh, it was just, I re what really got me into it is when we sold our business to into it and that's the makers of QuickBooks, Quicken, mm -hmm. uh, don't know. And uh, after I, I served them for a little bit, we transferred 22,000 of our clients over to, to their fold. Uh, I started traveling around training on leadership and on how to grow your businesses. And I was talking to uh, business groups and pastor conferences and political groups and just all kinds of different leader groups all over. And inevitably, when I would talk about growth, they'd come up and ask me and say, well, what, you know, do you offer coaching? And I said, well, sure. What's your question? And I'd go in, sometimes I'd spend an hour with them, not realizing that there, that is a, a real profession here, that there are some companies with a multi-million dollar business like we are now, uh, you know, that do, that do the coaching. So I remember thinking, I'm doing all this traveling around. And so about 10 years ago, I shifted the focus. I still do some speaking, but I, I, I shifted the focus to, to build a coaching business and created the, the systems in there and then started hiring people. And now I've got seven coaches. We got about a 
150, 160 clients that we work with on a weekly basis. And we're really getting set to grow even uh, significantly more here. So having a lot of fun with that. That is fantastic. And that often is the case, isn't it? You know, you you are in your um, your normal profession and some over time people start asking you all of these questions. And I want to say um, for those of you that are out there listening right now, I want you to take uh, real notice of what Tim's just said there, because more than likely you are being sought out for that sort of information too. If people are sort of tapping you on the shoulder and asking you a number of questions, that's usually a pretty good sign that you've got something to offer other people by way of coaching or mentoring in some way, shape or form. And as Tim said, that is a real paid and I'm going to say highly paid profession very, that some very of you important. may yeah. wish to go down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a super so important piece. It, it, it's really, I remember one guy came up to me after I gave a presentation. He says, you know, you're smarter than you look. And uh, I want you to be my coach. <laughs> Thanks for that. And, <laughs> and so he said, but I don't want to grow my company. Uh, and I said, well, I don't think I want to coach you if you don't want to grow. He goes, well, no, I, I'm a $5 million company. I'm making $800,000, but I don't want to work any more hours. And I said, well, let me help you out here. Let's grow your company only if you can reduce your hours. And so we, we literally, we, we almost doubled his revenue. We more than doubled. We almost tripled his profits and we cut his hours down by half. He was working less than 20 hours a week here with it. So, but you never know, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a phenomenal, it's nothing like having another set of eyes on your business. I mean, yeah. I believe in it so much, Tracy, that I've got four coaching companies helping me right now on various aspects of, of helping to fine tune the different aspects of our business. So. Mm, it's that old saying, right? You can't, sometimes you can't see the wood for the trees. You need somebody, an outsider to give a different perspective, to ask very specific questions, et cetera, et cetera, that allows you to expand and grow your mind. So one of the things that, um, that I think is really, uh, there's so many questions about this, but I know that a lot of our listeners, you know, they may have um, heard that it's, it's like, they're listening to us talk about these numbers, you know, $5 million and multi-millions. And they're sitting there thinking, God, man, if I could only just get to $1 million, that would be amazing. And often um, we hear the saying that the first million is often the hardest. So can we, um, you know, yeah. can we talk about some of the things that maybe some people who are listening today that have got smaller, uh, you know, they might be solopreneurs, what are some of the things that they could do that you typically see, you know, people who are become really successful because everybody starts somewhere. They become really successful over time, but there's certain things and patterns that you see that these people do frequently. These yes. people are successful that maybe some of the struggling ones, you know, they get stuck in that mouse wheel of never really making it. What, right. what do you see there? Well, there's, there's, there's several things. One is sometimes we look at our business and it's being so small and insignificant that sometimes we don't pour energy into it, like a, like a massive amount of energy into it. That's desperately needed. I was working with my son and he was starting a, an online uh, fitness coaching uh, program mm -hmm. and he's played college football and, and uh, he's got a, body like a greek statue and he's but you know he stared at that business for two months and the business stared at him back and i said this is you know you're not going to win a staring match you know with a business i said this business is starving for your energy and i said you've got to just put heart and soul in just like you're prepping for football season you've got to just pour energy into this and i remember us at the beginning of the month saying, why don't we see if we can get 20 new signups here and by the end of the month he goes dad that's impossible i said well if you think so it's definitely true but let's just pretend it's not uh, impossible let's just say let's just go for it and he poured heart and soul into it poured energy into it and he finished the month at 21 uh, new clients boom got it so number one is is don't get lazy don't get don't get weary. Don't get worn out. It just, it just needs a lot. It's like raising an infant. They just want, want, mm -hmm. want, want, want. And it's like, you know, you can't even talk yet. I'm still pouring into you. And you know, they're cute, of course, 
but uh, they make messes and it's just, so it's like nursing a baby. You got to just pour tons of effort. You mothers out there know what I'm talking about. I'm one of 11 kids. Okay. My parents love making love having sex or they love kids or both. I don't know which, but I mean, we had kids all over the place when I grew up and, uh, but it's just pouring heart and soul into it. Number two, number two, Tracy is, mm -hmm. A lot of times people just think, well, a thousand other people do this business and they look at their business kind of as a commodity and they don't mm. realize the uniqueness of their fingerprints are all over this business. And that's what makes it unique. And so they're lacking what I call what actually what Seth Gooden 20 years ago wrote a mm -hmm. book on this called the purple cow. And yes. And they're lacking the, that unique aspect that makes them stand out. Seth said, you know, you can be like a brown and black and, and you know, white cow that just blends in. But if you if you're if you're not remarkable, you're invisible. Mm -hmm. so you've got to go from invisibility out to stand out remarkability. And that is finding the uniqueness of your business. Why? Why should people buy from you and not your competitor? What special thing do you do that is, is, is unique, that's different from other people? Why mm. are you different? Why should people choose you? I remember I was working with this plumber because we work with a lot of contractors and specialty doctors, healthcare and contractors, home builders and that. But this plumber drove in and he, 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 he came in the parking lot with his, his right here in Tulsa, it's Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm. He, he drove in and he had this sign on the side of his van that says, we wear belts. I go, why is that? He said, well, plumbers are famous for showing off their butt crack. He said, we wear belts because we don't want to show off our butt crack. I said, okay, so let's make that part of your unique, your, your, your purple cow part of your unique proposition. So we had the no butt crack guarantee. I mean, it's like use some humor in what you're doing, right? So people mm -hmm. are calling up, laughing, says, you're the no butt crack, crack, crack guarantee guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and, and what's that guarantee? Guy? You know, if you see our butt crack, labor's free. Boom, you know? So, you know, how, what is it that you can stand out? We're just blending in and we're wondering, twilling our thumbs, wondering why people aren't calling us. I mean, I, I want to ask them, you know, there's a few things that I want to talk about um, in terms of just those two things, you know, and you, you talk about energy, right? And that that whole concept of what you pour in is often what you get out. Like you got to fill up that, almost, that bank harvest. account, right? You've, you've yeah. got to do that. If, right. you, if you give it no love, you're not unlikely to get a, a harvest back from that, right? But I, it was interesting because I was listening to something else um, just a couple of days ago, and they talk about this concept of grit. And I think this is a, the same sort of thing that you're talking about here is that that energy and having the stamina and the uh, to just keep going, just to, to put into it, pour what you've got into that, not to the point where you burn yourself out, but to the point where you're able, you know, you're able to sustain this at a really good rate so that you've got really nice balance. And this concept of grit being that you like you say there are some things that don't always go right there's some stuff you're gonna fall down sometimes you're gonna fail at some things but it's knowing that you can just pick yourself up and you just keep going and having that stamina and the grit to just stick so at it right right yeah. Yeah, there's there's like a good friend of mine you probably haven't heard of him uh, but he made a few extra bucks here. His name is Bill Gates. He started this so software company. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Who's that? Uh, but anyway, he was telling me, actually, I've never met him. But if he meets me, he's going to love me. I just know it. But anyway, just trying to really impress your people. And I think I lost all of them. I'm sorry. <laughs> but <laughs> but he said he didn't take a day off in his 20s. And and mm. so, you know, I look for right now, our, our, our coaching business continues to go. And now I've got my trun. My, my son trained to, to run it and I'm helping out here and there. But my main focus now is I'm looking for owners of businesses who are bored, checked out, no energy, and I'm looking to buy their businesses and I can buy their businesses cheaper than if I'm buying it from somebody that's energetic, pours everything into it. So, I mean, look, uh, you know, there's, you can be one way or the other, go for them uh -huh. all the way, like burn the ships in the bay, just make it something that you're going to grow from or just, 
you know, one guy said, uh, you know, you, you can't do something half ass that requires a full ass effort. You know, so yeah. I, I hope I didn't turn off any of your uh, folks there yeah, with but, the and, language there, but you know, come on, like, like, get off. I mean, it's so true. Term. It's so true. You know, often we expect that, oh, it's just going to grow and run itself. And that just, uh, and I think, you know, if we think back um, to some of the terminology that has been used in the, the business industry for some time, you know, passive income, et cetera, and, and this myth that's been created that you can create something that requires uh, no effort. And and that might that might work for a very short period of time until such time as it um you know runs out of fuel. So it's an interesting um you what, know that is a really interesting living concept on? then. Yeah. Exactly. Right. It doesn't work that way, right? Yeah. Um the other is you know this concept of your USP so finding that unique thing. What is so special about you? And I think you make a really good point here is that often uh, we think it has to be something Oh my God, what could it be? Something amazing. I've got to come up with something. And that that uh, story that you told about the plumber, you know, the no butt crack guarantee. I mean, it's so simple. And it's, you know, it's so simple in its form, right? It's true. Um, who I mean, some people might want to look at that, but I certainly don't from a sweaty plumber. But anyhow, um, you know, so so that would be that is something you can really grab and use and use with a bit of humor. And right. often we we think we have to be so serious in business and we lose that sense of humor and that sense of, I'm going to say, um, realism and connectedness to our audience. Right. right. <laughs> it's very important. You know, if you can't get somebody having a good time, even laughing with you in your presentation, when you're trying to sell something here. <clears throat> It, you know, you're, you're really hurting yourself laughing or, or good naturedness just opens people up to say, Oh, this is friendly and safe. Boom. Let's go. It. So let's, let's not be afraid of, of, of getting out there and just really having a good time in doing what you're doing. It doesn't matter if you're cleaning toilets out or unplugging mm -hmm. drains or it doesn't, doesn't matter. Just heart and soul into it is so mm -hmm. huge. And have a bit of fun, as they say. You know, if you're if you're having fun, you're not working a day in your life, right? You're just enjoying I love yourself. That. That's, that's um, I, I want to touch on this too. You talked about your son, right, and him starting his own um, gym or his own business, and and uh, you know, he was saying, "Gosh, Dad, you know, I, I need to find some new clients, and how am I going to do that?" And you said, "We are going to go and find twenty new clients," and uh, and often I know, you know, a lot of particularly new businesses will start out with, oh, okay, I, I've been listening to all these gurus and I've got to come up with this whiz bang fancy marketing campaign to try and draw in all of these customers and and um and and pour a lot of their energy, their time and their money into trying to do right. some tactical or special thing that's going to create this magical um customers to appear. And I suspect that you actually, the advice you gave to your son was actually a really simple piece of advice. You want to talk us through, like, let's imagine we've got a whole lot of other people listening to the show today that are like, oh my God, if only I could find 20 new clients this month. Okay. That so would be amazing. What should I do? Yeah. So here's here's the thing. I'm going to I'm gonna lay it on heavy. And if you kick me off the show, you know, and you're disappeared, <laughs> I, I understand I went beyond my boundary. Okay. I, in, in our company, we built the first hundred clients with cold calling. All right. Simple okay. script, just short conversation to set up a 10 minute call to set up an assessment to bring them into their coaching call. All right. So we had a flourishing business. A hundred clients is pretty good. We didn't start there, but it took us a while to build there. But we had a 99.75% rejection rate. <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah. I mean, I had somebody call me the other day is like, gosh, this is impossible. I'm trying to do this cold calling. And it's like, well, how many people have you called? Well, five. <laughs> All right. Well, did you have any interest? Well, one of them was interested, but I don't know if he's going to buy or not. I'm like, you are just stop hating yourself. <laughs> you know, stop mm -hmm. hating your wallet. Stop hating your bank account. Get over your fear. 
get numb to the no and press through who you become in the process is even more important than gaining all these clients, whether it's 20 mm -hmm. clients or a hundred clients, you know, it's just like, yeah, I, I want to do everything except to have to like talk to people. I don't know. I want to do everything except for having to like, you know, get rejected. Well, you know, I think, you, you know what a KPI is, right? Uh, and and mm -hmm. I'm sure that you, you, you talk about this in your, in, your, in your podcast. KPI is a key performance indicator. Here's mm -hmm. a KPI to think about. Here's a KPI to think about. Measure how many no's you run into in a day. And mm -hmm. so we would require our, our, our calling staff at those times to make a minimum of 150 calls and with a 99.75% rejection rate, they could spend two days in a row with all no's. And so, but that's where our coaches came from is learning how to, to get over their feelings and overcome the, to master something that they don't want to do, or even they hate doing. Here you are going to be coaching somebody to get them to change their habits. If you can't master your own habits, come on, you know? And so who yeah. you become in the process is worth the grind, but you've got to learn to grind. I don't, I don't know if you guys have shark tank down there mm -hmm. in that beautiful mm -hmm. place here, but Mark Me Cuban too. is this guy that owns the, the, he's a billionaire at this point here. And he's all about grind. If he doesn't see somebody that wants to grind, he doesn't want to invest in them. And that's where I'm at right now, too. In the business I'm looking to buy, I'm either wanting to buy it outright or somebody wants me to buy in with them. I want to look at what kind of grind they got, how, you know, how much grit they have, as you said earlier, mm -hmm. uh, Tracy. And so um, I, I just say lean into it. Success looks messy and it looks like it's impossible and you want to give up. But if you press through during that time, who you become in that press through moment is who your clients need you to be with even tougher problems. Absolutely. And like you say, it does, it creates that, you know, each, each um, failure, each time you stumble, it creates a, a, a harder outer shell for you to be able to um, deal with the next thing, the bigger thing that's coming your way. Because as I say, bigger business, bigger problems, but you've also become a much stronger person in the process to be able to handle all of that so that the uh, ability for you to be able to push through becomes easier and easier because you've become that person. Um, I love that this this conversation because, you know, if I come back to that, um, that sense of grit and, and uh, this research that I've been doing just like today's show about, you know, what is the difference between a uh, someone who's really successful and maybe those entrepreneurs who, who don't always see or have uh, ignore the things that need to be done to become successful. And this thing of grit, of stamina, of um, of grind it has come up so many times. And I think it was right. Stanford University that actually did a study on this to determine, you know, for even for a whole bunch of um, different scenarios, you know, what was it that made people so successful? And it actually came down to that one thing. So you're talking wow. about getting wow. over yourself and realizing that 99.9% of the time or 97.5% of the time, the answer is going to be no. But get used to it, baby, because if you're used to hearing that no, 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 like we did when we were little kids, did you ever take no as an answer? Probably not. <laughs> Most likely, kids don't, right? Perfect what do they illustration. Do? They, they just they say, "Oh, mum said no." I say, "Okay, I'll go ask dad." Um, dad says <laughs> yes, so off I go. You know, I mean that's classic um, child one hundred and one. And oh, somehow, that's so good. As we grow up, we forget to do that. We forget yes. that because then what would you do? All right, dad, mum said no, dad said no. Well, some might say, well, you little bugger, you go and ask your grandparents and they say <laughs> yes. You know, and that tends to be how, how it happens. And that's the same thing that we need to do as entrepreneurs in our adult life is keep asking the question because it's, you know, when I used to be a sales coach, to say one, a no is one step closer to a yes. So you say, yes. no, 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 no. Eventually you're going to get a yes. So just yeah, and you get you get better, and really you're you're wanting you're wanting to um, press through something you're afraid of doing. 
Mm-hmm. And to grow a business, it's not all just confidence and everything's just so smooth. It's a messy progress is messy. Uh, and you get dirty and things blow up and you, you want to go put your head in a pit somewhere and just bury your head in the sand or whatever. So it, it's just, it, it, you've got to just pick yourself up and push yourself forward do the thing you're afraid of doing, do it afraid. It doesn't matter, but if you just keep doing it and you'll get better and better and better at it, who you are three months from now is going to be worth the struggle. It, you you know, you're going to look back on it. And now I, I, I used to do everything in the company and now I, I don't do anything except to look at the key numbers and advise i meet with my key people and advise them and coach them but they're get, actually giving me a, a report of what's going on so you know but you don't start that way you gotta you gotta be willing to to, to do the the tough stuff and you have to go through something and you may be afraid of doing it, it, it it's like a little to use a little kid it's like learning to walk little kids mm-hmm. learn to walk and they get up on a tripod and then they get up for two feet and then boom their their heads bouncing on the concrete and you think oh my god while tears are still going down their face with a big knot you know knot on their forehead you know they're getting back up again in the middle of their pain and failure we've got to mm. have that kind of tenacity to absolutely and and as we're thinking about this, and because you brought up, you know, the, the concept of your son and, and that sort of fitness space, right, you know, right. I look at business like like that, right? So often when we go and we think, right, I'm going to work out, I'm going to, and we think about, well, what parts of my body will I work out? Well, I want to work on my legs, my butt, my arms, my whatever, whatever the case may be, right? We go to the gym yeah, and you yeah. tend to think about it in that way. What if we actually thought about business in that in that way when i'm going into business the things that i'm going to think about are my brain my energy you know what am i going to do to to exercise my energy muscle and to build up my uh, my energy in terms of stamina in terms of enthusiasm in terms of you know what i bring to the table each day my brain how am i going to make sure that i feed my brain the right things and and keep my mindset in check and then uh, this concept of resilience. So, you know, building up that muscle of resilience and being okay with rejection, being okay with failure, being okay with mess, all of those things that you've spoken about today really help us to build up that that muscle of resilience that enables us That's to have the tenacity to keep moving so forward. So important. You know, a, bi- a business is like a mirror. And it forces you mm-hmm. to look at yourself. It's a lot like marriage. It's a lot like money. There are certain things in life that just are perfect mirrors where you have to address the issues in your own life, mm-hmm. address the issues in your own heart. So don't run away. Embrace it. Get through what you need to get through. Develop what you need to develop and get done with it and move on to the next step here. We, you know, we, we, we're starving for all of you to come out and play. That's really what's going on. We want all of your leadership to show up. We want all of your boldness. We even want your tears and we even want your pain and your scars that there's never a wound that's wasted. So mm. just step forward and, and, and do it and keep doing it. I won't go into business unless they make a 10 year commitment. Mastery mm-hmm. is hugging a thorn bush for five years, not mm-hmm. for five minutes to hug a thorn bush is painful, but to hug it for five years, Boy, you'll get mastery at that point. You think, well, mm. God, this guy is sadistic or masochist. I'm just saying success is not for the faint at heart. You got to be built up on the inside. You got to get ready to go for it. And you'll be so glad you 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 poured the energy into this and you pressed through your fears. I promise you. I, I wanna I wanna go here now because um, often, and I think this is also one of the major differences we see with people who are extremely successful and those that kind of struggle along, is that they get help and they get support early on. And you talked about this before. You were saying that, you know, even in my business now, being as, you know, I'm successful, we're, we're turning over, you know, some good dollars. 
I still have people that come in and advise and give um, their opinions on the business from different aspects. And right. so having somebody, a coach and a mentor, as early on in the piece as possible, just like you would if you were going to the gym, you know, you could struggle along and try and do it yourself and maybe you're lifting okay. the weights the wrong way, but you, okay. would, you would actually – you would get the personal trainer to come and show you how to do it correctly, right. give you the fastest path um, to success. And and in our world, that's what we also want to do, right, is help people to to find the fastest path to, to whatever success is for them. And like the guy that you were talking about earlier was, hey, I want you to coach me, but I don't really want to grow my business. Um, and, and you got him to really think about, well, what does success really look like for him? And the success actually look like, well, working less hours. You know, I can, I can afford to make more. I'm happy to do that as long as it doesn't mean that I have to sacrifice more of my freedom to do so. Yeah. So that and, and that was a really interesting uh, client to have. I met him in a church environment where I use uh, biblical principles to share the growth principles. And so I'm not shoving anything down anybody's throat here, but that's where I was. And so. Uh, he came in there and, uh, and I remember telling him, I said, well, you got scarcity thinking. He goes, I'm not a scarcity person. I said, I'm not accusing you of that. I said, that thought is scarcity. You scarcity is either, or either I show up at work on time or I take care of my kid. You know, that's what a victim says. All right. And, uh, either, either I grow my business and work more hours or I work less hours and don't grow my business. Well, that's a scarcity thought. Uh, abundant thought says, and in both and in both. So the abundant thought says, let's grow your business and let's reduce your hours. Mm -hmm. And so it, sometimes it does take, uh, an expert or a coach or somebody getting alongside you to really help you think through that process to make sure you can embrace it fully. And uh, sure enough, we, I remember building it. We, we had a two day event that I led uh, at the end of the, one of the years and they were just under $9 million, but their, their net income was like $2.2 .2 million mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. from 800,000. It was like, Oh my gosh, you know, it's just, and he was only working 20 hours a week and he only had to work five hours a week with the system that I taught him but he felt guilty and he just stuck around the, stuck around the office a little bit longer just because he felt guilty. But, you know, these, these things, those, those are realities. You've got to do the hard work, though. You've got to be willing to mm. pour it into on the front end. I, I want to you said some interesting things about where you are in sort of your business cycle right now, where you are in an acquisition phase of like, I'm looking for other businesses that I could buy up, grow up, and then potentially, you know, um, upsell or, yeah. or um, you know, or hand on to another family member, I suspect is what you're, um, you're looking at well, doing. And to make more money. Portfolio of business. Yeah. To make more money to go to more resorts so I can chase my wife around chase, more. Chase your wife around. <laughs> yeah, totally. So I figured that was also on the cards too, um, which is a great thing to do. So, so in that sense, um, I want, I wanted to ask, because again, I want people to sort of see the big picture here of people that are very successful. This is what they do. They will go and say, well, I could start a business from scratch. I could come up with a concept and an idea and start something from absolutely nothing. And maybe I bootstrap it all the way to, you know, to, to making um, a few million dollars. Or I can actually look for something, I let's call it a diamond in the rough, where somebody has actually already come up with a concept. Maybe they've had a bit of success, but they're just at the end of their tether and the energy level is just not there anymore and they want out. And, and then you look at it and go, there's still opportunity in this. Um, yeah, yeah. Then the heads get rubbed together and you go, there's an opportunity here. I'm going to pick this thing up and run with it. Um, can you help everybody understand like, what are some of the specific things you are looking for in a situation like that? When I buy a company? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So I, you know, I've already got a, a system where, uh, when we evaluate the company, we're looking for um, a team there that can do the majority of the work. Like I'm not looking for any uh, companies that specialize in lung transplants because there's too much of an expert <laughs> team uh -huh. on the, the, the three people on the planet that can do that. 
Um, but I look for a team, like I was just looking at a construction company and we're just, we're in the process of making an offer to, they've got a team there and they've also got growth opportunities. They've already got a good reputation. So I look for that, you know, and that's worth paying more for. And, uh, and then there's some really clear 30 day non-negotiable things that we're going to do in the company, the first 30 days, then the 30 to 90 days or several things that I've identified. So if those things line up and then I've got a certain payoff because I don't need the profits from the business, mm -hmm. um, you know, we want to be able to pay off the loan that we may have to take out from the bank to help buy the company. So we want to pay that off in a certain time. So those are some of the checklist items here, but it's, it's always looking for, um, you know, is this, is this a company that's got people in it that will continue to do the work and they need some really good leadership, you know? Mm -hmm. And now a lot of people that may be listening to this, they're looking to buy a business so that they can have a job, you know, and, yeah. and job, job is not this cuss word. It's not this bad word, but they, like, I, I know of one guy that just bought this uh, company, another plumbing company and it was a it was a two million dollar EBITDA, so it's very very successful mm -hmm. profits mm -hmm. for about two million dollars a year, and he paid about eight million dollars for it. We came in there with it, and he's living really reasonable. But he enjoys having there's about fifty employees or so there that that work in the business, and he enjoys setting up the systems and all. It has nothing. He doesn't know anything about plumbing you know but he knows about business and so you know it, it's it's if you're really strapped for cash uh you may want to trade your expertise or your time what asset do you have to help work with somebody that maybe does have the money to to go in there or maybe there is an owner that that owns a business but they're kind of worn out and you come in there with energy and you say hey listen i want to buy into this much of the business by pouring my heart and soul into it and build, building it back up mm. that way it'll be worth more to you. And then I'll have a part in it too. So there's a lot of different mm. ways to do that, but I, I really look for the team that's in there and I look for, can I grow this? I need to be able to grow it by increase it by 50% in the next two years. So that's, you know, a mm. very specific, I didn't know how much detail you wanted because no, you know, that's I great. Get super okay. detail with it. So, well, I think you know the key here is, and the reason I ask that question for, is actually twofold, because I think it, you know those that are listening that are thinking, well, maybe you know I want to create, I want my own business, or I want a, to create myself a job. Um, what are the what are my options? Create something from scratch. I can do my own thing. Maybe I've got some skills, some expertise, um, and experience that I could even be, you know, teach some people some stuff. So there's that type right. of um, consulting business that you could start, or you could start, you know, a brick and mortar type something. Or the other alternative is I can go and purchase something that's already um, established. Yeah, now, the two problems that I'm looking at here is is actually not that. So we're looking at, you know, these are the two options that I could do. But you want to think about this in the sense that what Tim has just said that he's looking for when he's purchasing a company is, you know, uh, has it got a great team? Has it got some growth opportunity? Has it got a good reputation? I mean, those are all the things that you, that you want to make sure you build into your company. Why? Because it makes it desirable for somebody else to want to purchase it further exactly. down the track. Exactly. Right? So that makes it more it makes it more desirable. It gives it a, um, you know, it makes it interest, interesting for somebody else to purchase. The one thing that makes it very interesting for somebody such as Tim to come in and say, hey, I'm ready to buy this, but I want to buy it at a discounted rate is the absence of you, the leader. Right? There was a one um, common factor in, in what he just spoke about there was that you as the as the business owner, maybe you've lost your spark, maybe, you know, circumstances, life happens, there are reasons why you I, might, might I, want to move on. But, um, you know, in the absence of you and in, in, in you not being able to build that company up so that it can be can be managed without you means that if the time comes when you want to sell it, it's likely that you will 
uh, you will attract a lower price because of that. So I just thought that was an interesting thing for us to be thinking about and to stimulate some thought about. And it actually doesn't matter whether you are starting out in business or you are a lot further along the track. Um, Exit strategy and what you are going to do further down the track is vitally important at every step of the of the process. That's my belief. A- absolutely and yeah if you're if, if the business is completely reliant on the owner there's no you know and the owner doesn't want to work there <laughs> anymore then you know it, it's it, it really cheapens the business and so mm-hmm. what we do in our coaching is we are always making the business more valuable because someday it may be sold um i usually tell my business owners don't be so quick to sell it if it's a goose that's laying a golden egg for you. Learn how to have it run with very minimal amount of your time. And so we set up processes for that like I did with, with my one friend I told you about. And uh, But, yeah, it's, it, it's something that you want to make sure that uh, in any business you're working on, you, you don't want to be the star of the show unless it's a, you know, a, a show in Las Vegas and you're the one that sings, you know, but I mean, if it, for a business, you want to be able to be invisible and not re- the business to rely on you to have to be there. Leadership is really mm-hmm. tested in your absence, not in your presence. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Um, And and that's a really good thought to, uh, you know, something to ponder that uh, leadership is tested in your absence, not in your presence. So I I know that you've um, you spent quite a bit of time writing a book, uh, The Power to Create. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that and maybe tell. I um, I didn't know if you're going to mention that or not. Here it is. Oh, of course. Well, uh so there you go. So I I want, um, you know, I know that our listeners are, are, are probably listening to this and thinking, gosh, I wonder if if Tim's got some materials or some way that I can connect with him further. And of course, having written a book and put all of your, you know, your knowledge and your expertise uh, onto paper means that somebody can pick that up and really get inside yeah, of your yeah. brain. It, it really, it really, the power to create, I, I wrote that um, and I, and I wrote it more from a, uh, um, my faith position because I wrote it to, for pastors and business owners, uh, you know, that are uh, God fearing folks. And I wanted to redefine what money was and uh, how much we're serving it or it's serving us and uh, to redefine your relationship with money. And then what wealth is redefining wealth. And I redefine wealth as, as creating values it, You know, wealth is not something that comes to me. Wealth is something that comes from me. It flows from me. It's creating value to serve others. And the more value you create and the more you serve others, the more you're going to attract of uh, the recipient of that wealth. So um, it's a powerful book. And there's also another thing, and I'm not sure if this is uh, for those that do have a business and you would like a fresh look at the business we have what we call a growth plan and the growth plan is that we take a look at your business and your strengths and weaknesses and kind of where you are revenue wise. And then we build a business model. It's very, very powerful, simple, but very powerful business model where we look at your capacity and then we look at your three-year plans and then we'll recalibrate that three-year goal with this new capacity and then it's all built in the same call. Uh, then we we give you eight to ten step by step processes to get to that three year goal, and it's it's very valuable. It's very tangible. It's very tactical, and uh, so it's, but for most businesses, it allows them to add another hundred thousand dollars of profit to their business just following the eight to ten. Uh, steps that we tell tell them to take. So we normally sell it for twenty five hundred dollars US. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to offer it free. We're going to waive it. If they talk about unlock and how much they love Tracy Wilson, leave her a five star review. Then you. boom, you know if you email me Tim at redmondgrowth.com or go to our website redmondgrowth.com and you follow through and you fill out this stuff. Just say you you love Tracy and you're a follower of her show. And boom, we'll waive that twenty five hundred dollar fee. 
Well, that's thank you so much. That's very generous of you, yeah. and I'm sure that our, our listeners and viewers would love to take you up on that offer. And I'm, I hope I've got that uh, that uh, website correct at the bottom of yeah, the screen. Yeah, running... yep. Exactly. Right, that's so... exactly it. So yeah, go there out go. there, so or, head on or, over. You, or you can email me directly, Tim at tim at Redmond Growth, uh, and, and I'll be glad to answer your questions or anything you've got there. That's that's fine. Fantastic. Wonderful. And guys, just make sure that you mention uh, Unlocked with Tracy Wilson and uh, Tim will make sure that you get that absolutely free. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, head on over to redmondgrowth.com uh, to pick yourself up those things. And also on that website, right, they can also find uh, the book. Uh, yeah, they can to be find the book uh, and if they mm -hmm. buy it, um, I can sign it. Now, if they're, uh, you know, they're folks in uh, Australia, uh, I would recommend getting a Kindle book. <laughs> you know, just, <laughs> I, I think it would cost cost me about two house payments to send you guys a book. Um, it, may not, it may not be that bad, but uh, anyway, uh, but yeah, so it, it, it'd be a it'd be a blast to connect uh, with whoever wants to. So. Fantastic. Well, there you go, guys. I think today's conversation has been really interesting, and I'm really pleased that um, you know that we got him onto the show because of his wealth of experience. And yeah. and I'm talking, you know, a broad experience across multiple different industries, and uh, and working with all the different types of uh, of customers. And again, from all over the world in different industries has been a real blessing for us to have him here today to talk about these things. And I think there's some key things that he's spoken about that I want to make sure that, you know, out of every show, you know, I kind of go back and recap the things that I think you should take away. The difference between somebody being really successful and maybe, you know, spinning your wheels for some time is like Tim said, you've got to have that grit. You've got to have that stamina and, you know, getting used to the work no but not letting that phase you just keep going keep moving forward because you know we didn't talk about it in this sense but business is not a sprint it's a marathon and we just have to keep going and most um you know if you you know anything about marathons i know it a little bit because my husband has uh, been training for one but you know he says to me if i can get to 27 um what do you call it? miles kilometers whatever you want to call it see and now i'm showing i really don't know about uh, marathons but anyway you get to that point um you know that's kind of the point where uh people usually start to get the wobbles and and things start to go astray that's what business is like you know we all start out with a hiss and a roar and all excited and then it peters out over time so you want to make sure that you you know you load yourself up get good people around you you stick to your guns you build up your strength and your muscles around your energy you know your brain your mindset that resilience and your business acumen and you get the right people to support you I think those are all key things that uh, Tim has spoken about today and he gave you a bit of an insight into how he goes and he looks for opportunities where people have already, I'm going to say, done the hard yards, built these businesses up, but it's now time for them to let it go. So uh, I hope you've uh, enjoyed today's show just as I have. It's been a whole lot of fun and it's been fun uh, being here again with you guys on another episode of The Unlock Show. Tim, I want to ask you one last question yes. before we wrap today's show up. Uh, what one piece of advice would you give to a uh, to a I'm going to say to a business owner who's been in business for less than five years, what's a piece of advice you would give them? Okay, I'm going to get real personal because this is what just dropped in me here. Um, I would pay attention to your communication, especially your communication to yourself. Now, I ask you this question. If you had a friend that spoke to you the way you speak to yourself, would they still be your friend? So if you had a friend that spoke to you the way you, you speak to yourself, would they be your friend? And so uh, uh, take it easy on the guy that's receiving these words. You know? uh, be, be for yourself. Don't be against yourself. And your words are powerful. They, they, they frame your reality to a, a certain degree here. And I'm not going to get all metaphysical on you, but, but I'm just saying that, you know, I, I want you to talk about your business with confidence and talk about uh, your goals and, and talk about your abilities. And, and uh, it's from a, from a place of power. The first product you sell is not yourself, it's your state. 
that they buy into. Mm. Then they then they buy into you. Once they buy into your emotional state, then they buy into you. So I want you to emanate a real positive state where people are buying in to what you're doing. And I believe that you're going to make it big time. I'll see you at the top. Awesome. That is a fantastic piece of advice. And on that note, um, I would love for us to have a, you know, continue this conversation, but down that path, because I really, truly think that piece is so, so powerful. Um, but we will leave that for another episode. So today I want to say thank you so much for being an amazing guest. It has been a lot of fun. It's been great. Uh, and so, I love it. You know, valuable uh, insights that you have shared today and I really appreciate your time so appreciate uh, Tim's time and I appreciate those of you that have tuned in and are listening to the Unlocked show so like I always say go and live your life unlocked because there is just no other way and I'm going to see you guys on another episode of the Unlocked show Wednesdays and Fridays are the days that we go live so 10 a.m Brisbane time until then have a fantastic week bye guys <laughs>